And so I'm grateful to be with you this morning. I feel like I'm with family. And I love the presence of God. How about you? Yeah. Never take the presence of God for granted. Yeah. Ever. We are so blessed that we get to be with him. Yeah. There's no separation. Yeah. At any time, we can see Jesus. Yeah. And we're with him. And if you're waiting for a feeling, you may wait for a long time. Amen. It's by faith we believe, yeah. right? Oh, and I love the feelings. I do. I love it when he just rushes over me and I can't even stand. It's awesome. Yeah. 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 But always, let's not get familiar with the presence of God. And that's what I love about coming here because his presence is so delicious here. Yeah. He's so welcomed here. So before I get into what I want to share with you, um, again, we made headline news in Naples, and I want to uh, talk with you just about a few things before I get into uh, the word that I, I have on my heart for you all. And um, so it was about, I think Tuesday will be a week or two weeks. Um, I was in a staff meeting and um, sitting with, I have, in fact, a lot of my staff is here and members are right here on the front row. Just love them all here. Mwah. Um, you just make sure you don't ask them any questions, okay? No. Uh, anyways, um, so we, we were in a staff meeting, and um, they, they looked at me and they said, um, Pastor Tracy, we have to evacuate Naples. And I went, what do you mean we got to evacuate Naples? Totally clueless, you know, what a hurricane can actually do. And I said, yes, the best thing for you to do is to evacuate Naples. And so, you know, after listening to what they had to say, and we ended up evacuating Naples, and then the, the, it came out, Collier County had to actually evacuate. And um, so we were up in this beautiful, uh, it was a 4,000 square foot home in the mountains of North Carolina. Uh, and we had a member of our church that uh, offered it to us, and uh, there was 12 of us all up there. We had some staff and some family, and we called it a hurricane. It was awesome. Ate some great food, had some great worship time together. And, and it's interesting, now I understand even being there because, see, your faith has to be protected, and peace can protect your faith. And I was in this in incredible place, able to pray and stay in a place of prayer and had a bunch of fun with some incredible people. And uh, two days before they actually, because uh, if, if you were following the hurricane, they were saying that it was going to hit the east side, and then they said, uh, then it's going to go up the middle. And then uh, they said it was going to hit Naples, right? Uh, and so, but two days before they actually came out with that news, it was in the morning and I was having my, my time with the Lord and just worshiping. And I had just something settle on the inside of me, like this is over. And, and I got excited and I was rejoicing. And I pulled my husband aside, aside and I said, uh, this is done. Um, and I said, it's not going to be a level five when it hits. It'll be a level three. I said, and then it'll go to a level two. And, um, but then, two days later, they're saying, oh, Naples, right? It's going to be a category five. But the Lord gave me that witness. No, it's not. And um, they were saying that we were going to experience uh, 15 to 20 foot surges. I didn't know what a surge was, right? And so they basically told me that my house would be underwater. So that was something to, to think about. Um, so and my house is five miles in. So uh, basically, if that surge would have happened, Naples would be gone. Okay. And I do, I truly, truly believe it was the prayers of the saints. I truly, truly believe. The mayor of Naples said publicly, Naples was spared. The news said Naples experienced a miracle. Now you know that's God. <laughs> and um, and, and I, I want to say, I'm asking you to continue to pray. Um, the, there has been great devastation. All, nothing like a five, but there has been great devastation. Some of our Many of our mobile home communities, they're just gone. There's people in shelters, and there's great need of water and generators. And you know, we, my, we just brought, brought a bunch of saws because there's trees everywhere, like just everywhere. But this is the great news. And all the communities that we've driven through, every single tree was not on a house. It was on the road. Woo! 
Um, and, and so I ask you to pray. We need a quick recovery of the, the water systems and the electrical systems because they were completely destroyed. And there's some parts, for example, in a neighboring town in Bonita, uh, they're two feet underwater still. And uh, their sewage is coming through the drains. Uh, so please, uh, don't stop praying. Oh, it's all over. No, they're, they're saying that complete power will be restored by Friday of this week. They're still not in school. They're going to start school the following week. We have not had church for two Sundays. So it, is, uh, it was a, a major devastation, but nothing, 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 nothing like the enemy had meant for. Amen. And I truly believe it was the prayer of the saints. And I, I sent some pictures because I want to show you something uh, that I think was kind of unique. Now, um, I'm Bishop's daughter. I may be white, but I'm his daughter. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully he's watching. So, um, anyways, um, he talks about, you've often heard him say that we have an assignment. And I truly believe my assignment is Naples. That's my territory. So uh, if, if, do we have the pictures? And this is not going to work today. It's making noise. OK. I want to show you this picture. That is my city right there. That's, see where that point is, that little red dot there? OK. Irma touched down that, that one big street there. That's 41. The water is just a little bit over there. It came and touched that dot right there. When it touched that dot there, that's when I'm pretty sure it turned to a two. That dot right there is one block from our church. Okay, it, this really gets really good, though. <laughs> now, see how it's going diagonal? The way it's going diagonal? Okay, um, in that path, at the very top of that diagonal point, I don't know if you can see it with the little numbers. You can. Yes, you can. Okay, so that whole diagonal point from that little red dot all the way to the very top of that other dot, in the middle is where our place of business is. We have a dewatering company that, we, that we're in partnership with somebody. It, the, that hurricane passed over our business. Uh, it's, I'm not done. Oh, I'm just not done. This is awesome. And see that little point there, that little tiny point in, in, in the corner over there? That's my house. It's almost as if I, I personally feel that, the, that Irma had an assault with me personally. And it, it, it literally passed over our business, our church, our business, and my house. I don't think that's a coincidence. And so the, uh, the, I, was at, I, I went back to the house, and we had the pool guy. He was coming over to do the pool, and, and he kept looking at me, going, there's nothing wrong with your house. I go, I know. <laughs> he goes, it doesn't look like a hurricane came through her. I go, I know. <laughs> That's Jesus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And many of you, you guys are well taught here. We know in the Old Testament, when they put that blood on the doorposts, yeah. He had to pass over. And that's fine and dandy, but someone just needs to believe that. I know that I am deeply loved by my father. And my father takes care of his kids. And I believe that he's a good father. And so I have been dancing up a storm because I know that the enemy came to bring destruction about the prayer of the saints. And I'm talking all over the world, how the church comes together and believes God. And so one of the nights we were in prayer, because we, you know, we were all together, so we decided to do some worship, and just a seed got dropped in my spirit that out of this, we were going to experience unprecedented revival. So, why don't you, I showed some pictures to Pastor Andre. My husband is actually in a tree, and you can't, my husband looks like a little ant compared to the tree. And it literally takes up, the, this tree, it's a banyan tree, takes up the whole side of our church. And he's in it. And, and, and he didn't touch our building. 
and in charge our building. I give God all the glory and all the praise for his faithfulness. He's so faithful. Coming out of my skin with such joy and such gratitude, such, such gratitude. So are you ready for the word? So we do something at our, at our Naples campus and to, to, to prepare ourselves to receive the word because God wants to do extraordinary things today in your life. But we have to open up our hearts to receive them. Do you know that God doesn't push himself on anybody? He doesn't. It's when we're open and surrendered, he can do a tremendous work in us. And I truly believe that today that's what he wants to do because every time we come together, it's an opportunity. So say with me, today... I will hear the voice of God through the Word of God. My eyes will be enlightened, and I will be changed. Now turn to your neighbor and say, you will be changed. Turn to someone else and say, you will be changed. One more person say, I will be changed. Amen, amen. And if you're sitting next to your spouse, your spouse is saying, thank God you're going to be changed today. <laughs> so um, the message that I have for you, um, this, this came out of an, actually a vision I had. God has been doing amazing things uh, personally in my life. Um, and I believe we, can, we continually grow in God. And um, it's, it's almost like I got saved yesterday. Just, just the delicious things he's doing in my personal life, but also in our church. And this one morning, um, I got up, and uh, it, it was Saturday. And typically Saturday, I go to the church. We have intercessory prayer. So I went to the church, and um, I, I walked into the church, and, and they, they had some worship going. And I started to worship the Lord. I love to worship. How about you? Oh, love to be in the presence. So I was just worshiping the Lord, and not even a, the song wasn't even over yet. And the Spirit of God said to me, Breakthrough is now, breakthrough is now, breakthrough is now. I got so excited. I'm just like, Oh, this is so good. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm just so excited. But then I went, Okay, which one? Because I had several breakthroughs that I needed, right? But I had a sense that it, it had to do with our building. Because where we are currently, we've outgrown our facility. And even our overflow room is now filled. And uh, we've had members, you know, saying to us, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I tell you, this is what I say to them. I don't have to do anything. It's not my problem. It's his. Amen. And so, I, but I had that sense that day. It's done. Got a breakthrough. And a little bit about Naples. Land is, not, is very expensive in Naples, and buildings are scarce. Um, you know, people like to even rent our auditorium because there's just not a lot of space in Naples. So that was a Saturday morning. So on Sunday, we got wind of an opportunity, a really great opportunity <laughs> that I can't say any more about because <laughs> God's cooking something. <laughs> And, you know, I immediately, I, I called Bishop, I let him know about it, and he's been in, in prayer with us about it, but it's just, it's amazing what God is doing. But that same, that same morning after he said that to me, he showed me something about prayer. Now, at Life Christian Church Naples, we do 21 days of prayer in January, and then we do 21 days of prayer in August. Kind of like you, and we meet in homes too. I was like, I was going, this is awesome. We're family. This is great. And um, so in, in, in January, we typically do a fast as well. And so we were getting ready to go into our 21 days of prayer. And the Lord showed me this. I want to share it with you, three parts of this vision. And the first vision, if you could just picture this, a person kneeling, and they were pressing against a wall like this just pressing, and I knew it was prayer. They were pressing against a wall. Then I saw another person, and if you could picture this, they were kneeling and they were taking these blocks and, and, and putting these blocks, lining them up and lining them up, and they were building a wall. Say, building a wall. And I knew it was prayer. And then the last part of it is, I saw uh, our staff and some leadership in our church, I saw them all in a circle 
with their hands together in prayer. And oh, if you, oh I didn't even know how to describe what I saw. It was, such, it was so glorious. They were in such prayer. Their, their heads were lifted up. There was such joy. But what I saw was a picture of perfected unity. I mean, it was just so much unity. And But this is what's interesting. In the middle of this glorious picture of unity, I saw Satan. He was walking around that circle. And he was doing this. Tapping. Looking for a breach. Looking for an opening. Now, one of, the, one of the main prayers, I personally pray for the church, and actually it's even a part of when we do our membership classes, the first thing that we say, if you want to be a member of Life Christian Church, we ask you to commit to protect the unity of our church. And so in, the, in our membership, we hit it. We hit it. How do you do that? You, no gossip. Create the habit of believing the best. It'll make your life so much easier. All those negative thoughts, God's not planting them. If you have a negative thought about somebody, just think about this. Did God give you that thought? Where did it come from? Let's not be stupid. So, so I want to talk about what I saw. And um, I know that you guys are so well taught and some of the things I'm going to share with you, you probably have heard before. But keep your ears open because God wants to do a new thing today. Amen. So, and I, I believe this with all of my heart, that if it, if it had not been for prayer, learning how to pray, being a person of prayer, I would be six feet under today. Now, i got to give testimony again. I'm just so sorry. I just can't stop. So... Uh, in the front row right here, we have uh, one of my closest friends. Her name is Mona. Several weeks ago, she was rushed to the hospital by ambulance. She was dying. She had had an infusion of some sort, and she had some kind of an allergic reaction to it. When I got to the hospital, I'd never seen anything like this in my life. I'm talking her body was convulsing, 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 convulsing. And so, you know, when, when someone's in the hospital, you got all these people always coming in and they're doing stuff. So whenever there wasn't a person, like a doctor or a nurse doing something, all I did is I just kept my hand on her like this, and I just prayed in the Holy Ghost, complete peace, not afraid of death, just complete peace, just kept my hand on her. And, uh, you know, they'd come in and do something, and I'd... And I'd go right back. And um, uh, so... Later on, she came out of it, which is, it really is a complete miracle because there was another person who had the same type of fusion. They died. The devil meant to take her out. I need her. He can't. But what I want to share is that she's my sheep. She's my friend, but she's my sheep. And she said, she told me later that every time my hand was on her, her body, watch these words, her body came under dominion to that prayer. Now, I just want you to know I didn't feel anything. I was just doing the obedience, right? But she experienced her body coming under dominion, right? Nothing happens without prayer. Nothing. Nothing. So when I hear people saying they want to change, I need change, I need change, my first question is, how is prayer going? Because without prayer, nothing can change. The way that God designed it is that we, as human beings, we are the ones that bring heaven's resources to invade our earth. It's through prayer I take heaven's resources to invade earth. My family, my city, my work environment, it, it, it cannot invade. Heaven's ways cannot come into earth's ways without somebody praying. So if we really, really, really want change, then we're going to have to pray. 
And what I love right now in the season of the church, people are waking up and we're taking it serious. We're praying for our country. We're praying for our nation as never before. Amen. It's about time. Amen. Complaining won't do one thing. Amen. And you've often heard, I've someone said it, some of you complain, you remain. It's not even worth it, right? Why, waste, why, why even waste your breath? Now, it's interesting how in Matthew, uh, many, many are familiar with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh, worship him. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. On earth. As it is where? Yeah. So you hear the heart of the Father. The heart of the Father is, I want your earth to look like heaven. Yeah. Your earth. Your family, your finances, your physical body, your city, your assignment. And I thought, I think it's interesting that that prayer, you, you've got the disciples. Why did Jesus even do that prayer? The disciples said to him, Lord, will you teach us how to pray? That kind of got my attention because the Jewish people, they were a praying people. They have the hour of prayer. But why did they ask him, teach us to pray? Because they saw something different about his prayer life. They saw that in his prayer life, he got results. But I believe they saw something different. They saw that out of his prayer, it was relational prayer. It wasn't mechanical. Something happened to Jesus that they saw, and they saw the results, and they said, wait a second. Lord, teach us how to pray. And what I love, Jesus didn't say, that's for me. <laughs> I can't teach you that. He said, no, no, come up with me. This is how you do it, right? So, and I love it. He said in that prayer, he said it. And I don't know when it was, where it was a turning point in my personal life, where I just focused on, wait a second, Jesus, you said for me to pray, God, your kingdom come on earth, on my family, on my finances as it is in heaven. There's no poverty there. There's no sickness there. There's tons of joy there. When that hit me, forget it. It was all over. It was all over. Okay. So, and I love it how, I want to share this scripture. It's in Psalm 8, 4 through 6. You guys are familiar with this, but I like it in the NLT. And I'm, I'm saying this to kind of bring us to one place so we could go somewhere else. And you all know this scripture. If you've been here at Word of Faith, you've been taught so well. In the NLT, it says, What are mere mortals that you should think about them? Amen. Human beings that you care for them. This is how I read this, okay? What are mere mortals? I mean, they complain. They love you one day. They hate you the next day. They throw tantrums. They believe God, and then they complain. I, I, that's, that's how I see this. Like, Really? And you love them so much. Think about it. I think about my kids, right? Before you have kids, you know that there are going to be issues, but we still have them. <laughs> right? And it says, you made them a little lower than God. You crowned them with glory and honor. And you gave them charge over everything you made, putting all things under their authority. Awesome. That's what God did. And we get excited. Woohoo! I've got dominion. I've got authority. But I think that a lot of us have head knowledge about that, but we don't have it in here yet. Amen. And I will tell you why. Because a lot of times, you know, and I have seen this, you know, I, I, as I was preparing for this, this is what I saw. Uh, it, it, I think I want to do a little demonstration with this. Josie, why don't you come here for a second? Oh, I know you guys are so good. You don't want me to fall on my face. I so appreciate that. Yes. So why don't you come on this side? This is, isn't she beautiful? This is Josie. Josie's my brain at the church. So you've got a person that they're, they're, they're exercising their authority and their dominion in their finances. In the name of Jesus, I just take dominion over my finances, right? But as much as they're exercising dominion, dominion and authority comes under submission to God. Our authority and our dominion is not independent of God. It's dependent on him. The minute that Adam and Eve stopped listening to his voice came under 
a different authority, they lost their dominion. So a lot of times this is what we're doing, and I don't think we do it that we're even conscious that we're doing it, right? But we're trying to exercise dominion and authority in prayer over an area of our life, but then there's another area of life where we're in cahoots with the enemy. We've got an offense. Oh, I'm disappointed. I'm hurt. We've got some secret sins, some addictions, temptations. In the name of Jesus! And you're taking the devil with you. My mom used to say, you're in cahoots. Sometimes I believe our dominion is not working is because we're trying to exercise it over here, but we're cooperating with him over here. Give her a hand. Isn't she wonderful? Because, see, we all love that scripture. Resist the devil and he will flee, right? I love that scripture. But the one before it says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Well, how do you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God is when you humble yourself to his word. When you obey his word, even when it doesn't make sense. Amen. When you obey his word, even though you want to hit somebody in the face. Amen. I truly believe the envies and the jealousies and the bitterness and the offenses, they're all to rob us of our authority. And to me, it's just not worth it. I need too much from God. I need too much from God. And I don't want my dominion to be short-circuited because of an offense. And, and, and I want to say this. Most of the things that were bothered by by other people, they weren't intentional. Their misunderstandings, miscommunication, stuff happens. A person that really hurt you, they didn't wake up one morning and say, today I'm going to hurt that person. You know, you know what it is? It's called the fallen world. It's called sin. It's called humanity that constantly makes mistakes. And I have, I, I have made a decision, I'm going to exercise grace. Yes. Yes. Not even for their benefit, for my benefit. Because yes. I need my, my communication, my yes. flow. Yes. I need that authority flowing, because you never know the day when a devastation may hit your life. Yes. Yes. You can be so caught up in your hurt and your pain and not be equipped to meet a tragedy or a devastation that life throws at you. There are some, I believe that there are, there are devastations and tragedies that we can avoid. But Jesus did say that we're going to have trouble in this world. Did he not say that? But he said, but take courage, I've overcome them all. So that means if I just stay real tight to him, right, just stay tight to him, just keep listening for his voice. You know, even when we left Naples to evacuate, it was pretty amazing how it was so seamless we avoided traffic. We avoided everything. Everything was just seamless. I felt like the promises of Psalm 91 just were just totally, uh, uh, we, found, we found gas stations. It was just amazing. And the whole time I'm going, my gosh, the promises of Psalm 91. It's pretty awesome. And uh, my, my uh, former chaplain of Oral Roberts University, Pastor Ron McIntosh, um, my kids, I, I have... My middle and my youngest daughter are at Oral Roberts University. And, um, and when I was at Oral Roberts University, isn't that neat they decided to go there? <laughs> I never asked them to. <laughs> but when they told me they wanted to go, I went in my bedroom and I danced. Because, <laughs> you, know, you know, you want your kids to make their decisions and hear from God for themselves and uh, not tell them that God told them and he didn't. So... Um, I try not to play that trump card. <laughs> um, so, so my girls are at Oral Roberts University, and Ron Mac, when I was at Oral Roberts University, I actually spent some time living with pastors Ron and Judy McIntosh, and that's a whole other story in itself. Well, now my daughters are there, and Ron's kids, who I used to babysit, my kids now babysit his kids' kids. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So Ron calls me, how are you all doing? And, and he told me that my kids... I mean, they're seeing on the news, evacuating. He says, your kids are like, what's the big deal? It's my mom. It's my dad. They're fine. Completely unmoved. Want to know why? Since they were two years old, they began to memorize Psalm 91. 
Now, I'm going to tell you how obsessive I was with Psalm 91. Every time we got in the car, we said it. Every time. Now, you know how many times you get in a car. Every time we got in the car, boom, Psalm 91 started to speak the word. And I can tell you times when, you know, our car would be swerving in some kind of weather, and all of a sudden, my girls, in the name of Jesus, and start quoting Psalm 91. Promises of God. So grateful for the promises of God. So we see in Psalm 8 that we've got this authority. God's put everything under our authority. And I believe that the first place, according to, going back to that vision of that first person that was literally moving a wall, the first place that God wants to move walls, the first place where heaven wants to invade in earth is our heart. There are walls of resistance in our heart. And they're there because we live in this world and we face all kinds of things, observations, associations, teachings that are so contrary to God and His ways. We're bombarded. We're bombarded. And even if you know, you, you are walking with God, you're still getting bombarded and you don't even realize it. And I began to see these walls of resistance that have to be prayed through. Now, being at, at Word of Faith, we all know very well that transformation comes through the Word of God. There's that scripture that you all are very familiar with, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. What? Be transformed by what? <laughs> One more time, by what? <laughs> at our church, and we have a baby church, right? They think I wrote that scripture, but I didn't, because that's how much we teach on it. So... If you've been at, at, at Word of Faith, you know, and I'm, I'm sharing this for some of you who may not, you may be new to the faith or new to Word of Faith, that word, transformed, is where we get the word metamorphosis, metamorpho, and it's a beautiful picture. You've got this caterpillar that's crawling. In my personal opinion, it's not very pretty. Uh, you know, I don't want to offend anybody with that. So, but just crawling, crawling, and all of a sudden it creates that cocoon, Right? And then it comes out. It looks completely different. It's no longer crawling. And no, uh, no longer something that you really don't want to, you know, put on display. All of a sudden, it's flying. It's beautiful. And that's that word, transformation, metamorpho. It's impossible. It's impossible for, for us to be transformed, which you can't change without transformation. Hello, right? Um, without the Word of God, but also His presence. His presence. There's a transfer that happens in the presence of God. The, that's a familiar scripture in Psalm 16. In His presence is what? Fullness of joy. I just say fullness. There's a transfer in the presence of God. And I'm going to look at a scripture in Matthew chapter 17, another familiar scripture, verses 1 through 2. And in the NIV, it says this, After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. That word transfigured is the same word, metamorpho. It's the same word. So in his presence, in his word and in his presence as you're worshiping him. We've had, and it's, it's happened too. You could be in the middle of worship and a healing begins to fall on you. Right? In his, so and we know that in John chapter 15, verse 7, Jesus said this, If you abide in my word and you abide in me, you abide in me, you abide in my word, you will ask. You will ask. Now, that's interesting about, and, this, and I wasn't even going to go here, but this morning I saw this in prayer again. And um, that word ask, um, I, I, hopefully I don't botch this word up, it's a teo. And in, in the meaning of that particular word, and I looked it over several times where it says ask, um, it's not like an ask with a question mark. Um, can I have that? It's not like, I'm not sure if you're going to respond. That word ask, it's actually a relational word. It's, it's asking with, with this persuasion that you know the items that you're asking for, yes. he so longs to give you. Yes. 
That's that word ask. It's relational. There's nothing mechanical about it. It's not a system. It's relational. So it's kind of like this. I love shopping in my mom's closet. She's got really good taste. And she has a lot of clothes. So I may be at her house. Now watch this. I'm literally walking to her closet, and I've got my eye. There's that black dress that I really, really like. I'm actually in her closet grabbing the dress. I've got it off the hanger. Hey, Mom, can I wear the black dress? Why? I know she wants, to, she wants me to do that. It's, I'm walking. I, I love, I love pasta sauce. I love carbs. They're just wonderful. <laughs> I can live on carbs. I don't, but I love them. So, and I love a really good Italian sauce. So usually if I go to an Italian restaurant, I try the sauce, and then I know if it's really Italian or not. So my mom, she usually has one of my favorite sauces in her refrigerator. That word, ask is I'm walking to the refrigerator, I've already got the door open, I've got my hands on the pan. Hey mom, can I have some pasta? It's not a question mark. You get this? This is your father. This is your father. Maybe your earthly father wasn't that way. But your heavenly father's that way. Amen. Listen, I didn't have a relationship with my earthly father. God did something in my heart to show me him as father. Prayer can be so mechanical unless you see him as that father who wants to give you everything that you need. Because why? Not because you're all that in a bag of chips. Because he loves you. He is obsessed with you. Do you get that? Yeah. They're, they're, uh, someone needs to get this. Listen, he went to the cross to restore relationship. Yes. He couldn't stand the fact that he couldn't be with you. He couldn't stand the fact that he couldn't touch you. Amen. He wanted to have relationship. Amen. And sin got in the way. Are you hearing me? It got in the way. He had to get rid of it because he needed to be in a relationship. He didn't want to have a relationship with you through glass like you're in prison and you can't touch him. He had to get you out. And the only way was his son. That was the only way. If he didn't spare his son, how much more will he freely give us all things? All things. I pray today some of you need to be restored in God's love for you. Amen. He loves you so much and you're thinking, how can he love? I know what to do and I still do the wrong thing. He knows. He's not, he's not, he's not like surprised by that. And so what you think is I can't go to him because of this. No, you have to go to him so that can change. Yeah. He wants to supernaturally help you supernaturally help you with that temptation, with that addiction. He wants to help you. But you're thinking, no. He can't. That's a lie from the pit of hell. He's the only answer. And why does he want to help you? Because he loves you. When God looks at you, he sees tremendous potential. He sees greatness. That's why you have to surround yourself with people who really love Jesus because they'll tell you the greatness in you. Because the world's not going to tell you. Right? He thinks you're amazing. And I often say God doesn't make junk. He doesn't. So we have to be transformed by his word, by his presence. Another delicious scripture in Isaiah 40, chapter 31. It says, and another familiar scripture, but those who what? Wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Interesting, one of the words for that word, renew, is change. So they that wait on the Lord shall change. Shall change. It means every time, every time I'm in the presence, I'm changing. 
God's not finished with me. I need to change until I see him face to face. And I want more of him until I see him face to face. And, and I'll say it again. We don't mean to acquire the stuff of the world. We don't mean to have those things become a part of us. But we live in it. We need the filter of his presence every day. So in this whole stuff that happened in Naples, this one morning, my husband, you know, he gets up and he's got a, his chainsaw. He's so excited he gets to use his chainsaw. And he has his work clothes on. And, you know, he's this big white truck. It's huge. And he made sure that it had all the little things that I like about it, like I'm massaging seats and air conditioning in the seats. And I like nice things. So he comes walking in the kitchen. I got his breakfast for him. And he smelled so delicious. And he had that cologne on him. I'm kissing his face. Oh, you smell so yummy. And so I go, go out there. Be a blessing, right? So he goes. So about five o'clock, I hear the garage open, and, um, and you know, so I went to the, I have a door that, that opens to the garage, and so I opened up the garage, and he's in the garage, and he's at the beginning of the garage, and the smell, <laughs> he smelled horribly, <laughs> and I had dinner on the table, I said, don't even think about it, <laughs> shower, shower first. Now, when he got up that morning, went out into the the field to be a blessing, do you think that he meant to get dirty? When you live in the world, you're going to get dirty. You don't mean to. You're seeing billboards, you're seeing images, there's conversations, you're bombarded. You don't mean to acquire the, the mentality of the current culture. You don't mean to. But we get, we're, we're going out, we're getting dirty. That's why there has to be a daily time. That's why we got to do those touchdown points. I need transformation because the world touched me today. And I don't want to smell like the world. I don't want to smell like the world. You don't want to smell like the world. My mom used to say this to me. The first day that you don't pray, you know it. The second day you don't pray, your husband, your spouse, your children know. My kids definitely will know when I don't pray. What are you doing? Right? Best way to communicate, right? You don't communicate in anger. Nothing gets done in anger. So, so, but the third day that you don't pray, the world knows it. Amen. So I need, I don't know about you, but I need transformation every day every day and now I've gotten to a point that to me it's like prayer is like what are you going to do today it becomes a journey of excitement and even though you may be going through some things it becomes a journey of excitement because you know he's with you he's got great things ahead even though it may look so bad it's awesome so the next place that God wants to invade and change, obviously, first, it's your heart. The next place where he wants to move some walls, it's in our situations, in our personal life, in our families, in that rebellious teenager that you really think is not from you. Yes, he wants to invade that. He wants to invade your workplace, that boss who keeps overlooking you, who you really want to shoot them and tell God they died. I get it. Now, now, and Bishop talks about your assignment. Every single one of us, every one of us has an assignment. What I mean by this, it's, and it's not just for the, these special speakers and special pastors. And, no, 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 no. Every single person has a sphere of influence, a radius of influence, a people that we, me, you are to impact. And it's in conjunction with the church. So you need to be connected to a local body. If you're not connected to a local body, you need to be. That's just how God designed it. And your assignment is connected to your local body as well, not independent of it. So you have an influence, a sphere of influence that you have to bring heaven's resources into. And it comes through prayer. I pray you take that serious because your gas station can be a divine opportunity. The grocery store where you got your list can be a divine opportunity. 
We get so busy with our lists, I had to be redeemed from mine. We get so busy with what we need to accomplish. I'm a producer. I get it. That we forget why we're alive. I am alive to empty hell and fill heaven. And so are you. And so are you. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. He wants to use you in a mighty way because you bear the sun on the inside of you. Awesome. So invading situations. Now I'm going to share another scripture that you're familiar with. In the backdrop of the scripture, it's in Daniel. Daniel's a prophet, and he recognizes that the season of Israel's captivity needs to end. And the Bible talks about how he went into a time of prayer. And we pick up this angelic being shows up. And in Daniel chapter 10, verses 10 through, or 12 through 13, he says, Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day, Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 through 13, do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God. Look at that, humble yourself. Come under before your God. Get in his presence. Your words were heard. They were heard the first day. It doesn't always feel like that, does it? Does anybody ever feel like, oh, my prayers just hit the ceilings? Do I have anybody ever feel that way? Okay, we're friends. That's awesome. The rest of you, you're, you're lying, so. It's all right. It's all right. God saw it, so. This is, but the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me. The prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the other princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. So I want you to see this. You've got a natural kingdom of Persia, and there was an assigned demonic presence over the natural kingdom that was manipulating that kingdom. And so there was a battle going on in the realms of the spirit, and, and we see that he's, come on, I, I, if I could whistle, I'd whistle, like, Michael, come, you know, I need help, right? There's something happening in the realms of the spirit. There was a resistance. There were some walls that needed to be pushed. Come on, lean in a little bit. Say, I got to move some walls. Turn to your neighbor and say, come on, I need to move some walls. Prayer moves walls to take territory. I have seen a difference since the first year that I've been in Naples to where I am now in the realms of the, he and, and, uh, the air over my, our church. It's different. It's, it's different. I can't explain to you the freedom. But when I first came there, mmm, oh, I'm telling you, press. Pressing some walls. Pressing some walls. And also, a couple of things here. Demons like to stay, demonic presence, they like to stay where they've, been, where they've been at. They don't like to leave. They get, they get comfortable. And there's another, another scripture where Jesus, it's in Mark chapter 5, verses 9 through 10. Mark chapter 5, verses 9 through 10. It says then, and Jesus, or, uh, um, Jesus asked this demon-possessed man, then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, I'll just wait for you guys to get there. My name is Legion, for we are many. Now, depending on what, you know, what commentary you read, a legion could be anywhere from 1,000 to 12,000. I, I don't think he was very well. He was possessed pretty bad, right? But look at the conversation. He answered him saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. They like to stay until somebody, until a child of the living God who knows their identity in Christ, who knows that they're fully loved by their father, who knows that he's given them dominion on the earth, begins to take their stand and say, no, not in my city, not in my family, not in my country. I've been praying this. As for me and my country, we will serve the Lord. Yeah. So they like to stay there. Now, I had a problem with this at one time. Maybe you never did, but I did. Like, why do I have to pray and stay praying? Like, why can't I just pray once, 
Since I have all this dominion, I've got all this authority, why can't I just pray once? And it just happened. Anybody ever thought that? I have some honest people again. Oh, love you. So I have this habit, and um, it's something, it's a discipline that I have, and I, and I do it because of my husband, and I go to the gym five to six days a week, and I've had to stop, I had to change my confession, because I used to say I can't stand going to the gym, so now I say I love going to the gym, just love going to the gym, really, love it, feels great, he loves it, I don't, I do, I do, really. I'm getting used to that confession, so have patience with me. Um, so now you go to the gym, and, and you get that pump right, and some muscle starts popping out. You're like, oh, yes, this is great. I love this. And you so desperately want it to stay, especially in the gut where you've had babies, and, and, and they stretch everything out, right? And it's amazing because I can bend over, and I still have a pouch. It's still there, and I blame my kids, right? <laughs> So, and the reason why I have to keep going, because my physical body, it wants to go back to its fallen state. <laughs> you know, didn't the Apostle Paul say something about I beat my body and make it my prisoner? Yeah. Okay. There's a couple meanings there. But there's, there's, there's these laws of physics. I want to show these two laws of physics. And the laws of physics, one is entropy and the other is hysteresis. So the law of, of physics, entropy, we live in this world. Just remember, we live in this world. We're not in heaven yet. Heaven is our permanent residence. We're temporarily on this earth as ambassadors to bring heaven's ways into the earth. That's why we're here, right? So entropy means, uh, it says, it's things left unattended tend towards chaos. So if I leave my marriage unattended, it's going to tend towards chaos. If I leave my parenting unattended, it's going to tend towards chaos. If I leave my confession about my finances unattended, they're going to tend towards chaos. Come on now, somebody. Then the law of hysteresis says it has a tendency, watch this, a tendency of material to revert back to its original shape once the pressure changing it is removed. So the reason why I'm in the press, I'm in the press because I know that it wants to go back. It wants to go back. No, 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 no. Are you getting this? I stand because I refuse to go for it to go back to its fallen state. I'm praying over my city because it will not go back to its fallen state. Are you hearing me? Yes. Turn your neighbor and say, that's good. Yes. Even if it's not, that's okay. <laughs> the point is, you got to keep your foot on the pedal. Yes. You don't keep your foot on the pedal, that car's going to stop. Yes. And so then, and I love the scripture. I meditated on a lot. Psalm 23, though I walk through what? Yes. The valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your, and I usually say this, I know it says your rod and your staff, but I always say your word and your spirit, they comfort me, right? Though I walk through. So that says what Jesus said, we're going to have stuff in this valley here, right? And so this is a lot of times what we do when we're, when we're pressing, when we're believing God, we start off strong, right? Woohoo! Yeah! I got the victory, right? And so then, it seems like it's not moving. It seems like nothing's happening. Anybody been there once or twice? And so instead of walking through the valley, we decide, oh, I'm just going to lay down. We'll go into begging. Oh, God! <laughs> God, if you do this, I'll serve in nursery forever. <laughs> and then, you know, we'll go into tantrums. 
You've never done that, just me. You don't have to get, I'm fine, I can get up. Comes in handy to go to the gym. And what we do when we're laying down, I'm gonna tell you what the enemy does. Question God. Question the goodness of God. That's the number one thing the enemy does to us. Question the goodness of God. Maybe he's not good all the time. It doesn't look like he's being good right now. I don't understand why things happen all the time the way that they do. It's not up to me to figure that out. I was talking to Pastor Deborah. If I could figure God out, he's too small. And then, and then we go through, maybe he's not giving me a breakthrough because I'm just undeserving. Then you totally forgot about grace. Unmerited favor. See how the enemy, how he plays? You've done that, right? I, maybe that thing that I did over there, that's why he's not answering me. No, you've received forgiveness, right? So we go through all of this questioning, but notice the delicious part of this verse. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, right? We stop there. It says your word and your spirit they comfort me. So see, when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, right, the purpose of the habit of the daily touchdowns, the purpose of the daily transformations, the daily waiting on the Lord, is because this is how delicious God is. He knows you're going to be in a valley, right? But his word in his spirit comfort you. They become like an anesthetic. They're all around you. You've got super on your natural while you're walking. It's amazing. In fact, you're like, you're walking going, oh my God, there's a storm around me. Oh my God, there's a storm around me. But you're walking because you're inebriated in his word and in his spirit. You're not fearing. You've been with love and love casts out all fear. It's awesome. When my husband passed, 2002, Bishop walked me through that whole situation, right? I'm telling you, I experienced this, the most devastating time of my life, right? Devastating. I literally, I felt as if there was like this plexiglass in front of me, and I was looking through it, and I was just surrounded by his word and his spirit, and I was walking through the most grievous time of my life. I was walking through. I wasn't taking a nap. I wasn't laying down. I was walking through. I never had to see a counselor. I saw Jesus. 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 I never stopped my habit. I never stopped my touchdown points. I never stopped. I'm telling you, I was right there, right there. Yes. It was so, so difficult, but it's so awesome going through the valley with him and without him. It's awesome. And I have that book available. I wrote a book on that whole journey, and there's even a little love story in there. It's back there somewhere where they do all that stuff. So you can pick that up about that particular journey. And because I've, I've been asking the Lord, why, why do I feel so untouched by things? And he shared with me, you become, it's like an anesthetic, that word, it becomes an anesthetic. And so you can think clearly, even though there's a storm around you, you're still thinking clear, you're still seeing, you're still hearing, because he's a, there's a strategy, there's a strategy out of the storm, right? So how you enter the valley determines how you get out of the valley. What you do in the valley determines how you fare out of the valley. You've got to be with people that can encourage you through d difficult times. You can't do this by yourself. I can't. Okay, so now prayer builds, I gotta, I gotta close this down now. So prayer, it builds walls. That was the second thing I saw. I saw a person building walls, building walls. And these walls, the Lord began to show me, every block, whew, whew, and this wall was getting taller and taller. It's divine peace. It's divine provision. It's divine health. It's divine protection. I say divine because you and I, we don't have to live a mediocre life. We don't have to be subject. 
right? We're of a different economy. And I just simply say, I start my morning off when I begin to worship the Lord. I say, God, I'm so excited. I get to have super on my natural today. I've got super on my natural. Because I'm not just a natural being, and neither are you. He's a supernatural God, and we're his children, so there's super in and on our natural. Come on, give him a shout for that. In Job chapter 1, verse 10, Job chapter 1, verse 10, Satan is talking to God. This is Old Testament. We got better promises in the new. Job chapter 1, verse 10, it says, Have you not, God, made a hedge, a fence, a protection around him, around his household, around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. That's Old Testament. We got better promises. If Job had this supernatural hedge around all of his stuff, and you saw in that picture, I had supernatural protection around our stuff. Somebody has to believe it. I'm not a special person. I'm just like you. I'm a born-again believer. In fact, I believe I'm only in the ministry because I was hungry for God. Bishop came to our church and we were going through restructuring and he was looking at our flow charts and and because my whole idea has always been I just want to be a blessing I just want to be a blessing that's all I want to do and he came and he's looking at our flow charts and you know how Bishop talks <laughs> he's looking at it Tracy so you're the assistant pastor I went no I'm the volunteer he said, but your name is all over this flow chart. I said, I'm a volunteer. He said, Tracy, you're acting. You are the assistant pastor. I went, oh, I didn't know that. No idea. Just want to be a blessing. Just want to be, I just was hungry for God. Ministry found me. I don't even know why I said that. I don't know who that's for. <laughs> the point is, there's a hedge of protection. So prayer, it moves walls. I don't know about you, but I need walls moved. I don't know about you, but I need walls built. Every day. Every day. Every day. Listen, I, I, I like to eat. I'm pretty sure you guys do too. Right? Do you like to go very, very long without eating? Do you eat every day? Okay, you got my point. You got to eat every day. You got to pray every day. Every day. And it's not just, okay, I just had my devotional time. Okay, let me just now, now go. No, it's touch on points throughout the day. And, and you may be sitting here saying, I don't know how to do that. I'm new. I don't even know how to pray. Just walk around thanking God. Lord, thank you that you're with me. Lord, I'm just so grateful that you're in the car with me. I'm not going to get in an accident. Lord, thank you that you're with my family. Thank you that I've got your peace. Thank you that I have your joy. Just thank him, and that's prayer until you learn. But just touch down points. Just keep the, you know, my husband, he texts me throughout the day. Oh, it's delicious. Thinking about you, doll. Hmm. <laughs> touch down points. What is he doing? Keeping that fellowship, keeping that, right? I'm in your face. I'm here, baby, right? God, you're with me. I'm walking by faith. You're with me. Glory to God. So if you don't know how, you can start with just Thanksgiving right there. So, I want to circle back to unity, right? The last thing was the unity. This is for this church. Stay in unity. Protect your unity. So, I had this vision, and then after I had this vision, my mom, she has this conversation with me, and she was watching um, Sid Roth, and that particular program, they do a lot of testimonies and miracles and stuff like that. And um, on the program, there was a woman who had been in the satanic church who was, you know, had found Christ and and uh, she was saying that she would get uh, she would get assignments and she, like she'd be told go to this city she'd have a group with her they always went in pairs go to this city to this church because that church is doing something and destroy it and so Sid Roth said what did they do what did you do you know let me know the strategy right. <laughs> He said, oh, what we would do is we'd just sit there and we'd listen for a little bit, just listen and listen, and we'd find where some of those weaknesses were. 
where the, some of the, even something very small, we'd begin to tap it and tap it. <laughs> she said, tap. Just like I saw in my vision, tap, tap. We'd tap it until it would just get bigger and bigger and the people would destroy themselves. Is it really worth that false imagination? And so when I, when I had this vision, I, I, I pulled our team together and I said, listen, I said, and, and we have a real transparency amongst our team, and I said, we've got to believe the best of one another. If in any way you have a thought that's not believing the best, you need to understand the enemy's tapping. I did it to our personal team because I know that that's what he does. I, I can remember early on when I was learning these things, one time I, I put my head down to go to sleep and I was having a negative thought about somebody. You never do that, I know that. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, they're just not gonna show up. They're not gonna pull that thing off. They're just not, they're just not gonna follow through. And the Lord rebuked me. Why would you even think that? And he said this to me, Tracy, that thought's not from me. I learned that day to guard what's going on up here. Because it can be a playground for the enemy. And it doesn't need to be, right? So we got to guard that unity. Now prayer is the most effective. Prayer is the most effective. It's the most effective out of relationship. Out of relationship. I know I keep saying it. Someone needs to hear this. It's not I have to pray. It's I get to. I get to. I get to access God, not check it off my list. It's out of relationship. I get to make my husband breakfast. I don't have to. I love him, right? I get to wash his smelly workout clothes. <laughs> I don't say, oh, I gotta do that. No. Why? Relationship. Prayer is effective out of relationship. Out of relationship with Him. And in, in, in Psalm 104, another familiar scripture. I knew so many scriptures that you all are familiar with. I love these scriptures. Psalm 104, it says, Enter His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. If we can get the the uh, musicians up, that'd be awesome. Enter his courts, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. I want you to see this. I want to help you. I want to help you keep your, your prayer life fresh. I want to help you keep your prayer life so enticing. I want you to be so distracted with his presence that you're not entangled with stupidity. Things that you think mean so much and they don't. Things that are robbing you of your purpose and the plan of God for your life. So, in the Old Testament, when they would enter the gates, it says enter his court, enter his gates with praise and with thanksgiving, right? They'd enter those gates, they'd enter the court. The first thing that they would see was the altar of sacrifice. And they would see that animal burning, and they would say, take in my place. That's take in my place. Oh, thank you. Uh, are you getting this? I enter his presence. You took my place. You love me today. Oh, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you made me righteous. You can't help but go into Thanksgiving when you think about that. He died for me. There was a season of my life where I thought, no, he died for them, but not for me. There's this, there's this tendency to know he loves you, but he doesn't love me. Those are lies. So I personally feed the simplicity of my salvation. Oh, today... I'm worshiping you. You're my sacrifice. You're my Lamb of God. You loved me so much that you died for me. Glory to God. Don't get familiar with the sacrifice of Jesus. So I could 
wake up that morning, maybe you had a, a hard night the night before. Sometimes you wake up and you're excited to pray. Sometimes you wake up and you press snooze five times. Right? And, you, and, you're, and you're going through something and you wake up. And you're, oh, I'm going to pray. I don't want to do anything. I want to go back to bed. Anybody been there? Oh, I love you people. And so, you know, my husband brings my coffee to me. And all of a sudden, I'm talking, it's so, it's so quick. I could, I could have literally the cares of the night before, the day before. All of a sudden, I enter his courts. Thank you that you saved me. The hardest thing to do was to save me. The hardest thing. Everything else is a piece of cake. Do you see that? He demonstrated his love. If I could do that, how much more anything else? Don't diminish the power of the sacrifice of Jesus. I love these guys. They're awesome. Good to see you, Dana. And as I've been preparing for, it, this is a big theme of ours back in Naples. I'm just, at the beginning of this year, in January, I usually write out my goals. And again, word of faith, we have a baby church. Uh, delicious church, but they're young in the things of God. And I, I told our whole team this year, and, I, and we teach on prayer several times a year. We have times of prayer. I mean, prayer is a big theme of everything that we do at Life Christian Church. But my hunger for the people was that they would individually have that daily touchdown points with Jesus. That was my, my, my heart's desire. I said, by the end of 2017, I am believing God that every member of Life Christian Church will have a consistent daily touchdown time with Jesus. And it's amazing how the Lord orchestrated this whole year with that theme. And we ended up doing it, it was called a Freedom Conference. It was 12 weeks where we took people through getting rid of their past showing them their identity in Jesus Christ, showing them their dominion. It was a 12-week small group. Then after that, we had a weekend of, of, of just worship and prayer, and it was awesome. Something happened to our church. And I'm on this, this um, I guess I'm obsessed to help the body of Christ, specifically Naples, to know their identity and know their dominion. ID. I'm all about ID. And when I say identity that they're deeply loved. Yes. Deeply, deeply loved. People don't feel accepted. Most of us feel like we're on the outside looking in. It's a supernatural thing to experience the love of God. It's not natural. I don't believe it's a natural thing. It's a supernatural thing. And really, it's not difficult to experience. It just takes surrender. It just is, here I am. I need you. It's just so simple. I need you. And some of you, you've been far away from God. Some of you, you've been believing lies from the enemy. You've limited the love of God for you. And this really hurts me. I tell you why, because he did so much to prove his love, and then yet we have a difficult time accepting it. There's that scripture it says to know the love of Christ in Ephesians. That word is a real intimate word. It's gnosko. It's an intimate, intimate word. To know, to experience the love of Christ. It goes beyond what you can think or imagine. And when you experience that on a continual level, fear has no place. Fear has no place because the love of God casts out all fear. So I have to feed that love intentionally daily because fear is always present it's always there it's in the world but it casts out fear some of you this morning it's time to surrender you've been on the outside looking in and God is saying I want you to experience my love you're not a stepchild you're mine beautifully made strong I made you with purpose I have an assignment for you, but you've got to receive my love. You've got to receive my love. 
So I want to I want to pray a prayer, and and there's two individual two types of individuals I want to pray for first. You who are far away, you are disappointed in God, mad at God. Come on now, you blame God for things, and He was the wrong person to blame. Just didn't understand why. I healed from the death of my husband because I never questioned God. I trusted God. I ran to him. I didn't blame God. I understand this fallen world. I understand that we have a part to play with the promises of God. So for some of you, it's time to let that go. God so wants to flood you with his love this morning. He wants to start fresh with you. And then there's some of you in this place You've known religion, but you've not known a Jesus of relationship. Religion, going to church, is not salvation. It's not relationship. It's welcoming Jesus into your heart, recognizing he died for you. Why? Mm, Because he loves you so much and he wants to have relationship with you. Acknowledging that, humbling yourself to that, and receiving his Spirit on the inside of you means being born anew, the greatest miracle you can ever experience. So I want to pray with you this morning. So with every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Oh, I give you praise, I give you praise. Oh, I worship you, I worship you. Oh, I worship you. That was the song that I had this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah.